It's two o'clock. I gotta be quiet because everybody's sleeping. Let's get into this. Boink. So, Devil Mountain. This is a really boring chapter. It's a big map, not a lot of enemies, but we do get a cool mercenary dude, Navarre. Spoiler alert. Ah, this is too loud. So yeah, we're going further into the, the main island. We got passed through this mountain, and as, as with the previous chapters, bandits. More bandits. Yeah, right there. So, if you guys thought that FE7 had too many bandit chapters, you're right, but this game has a lot too. So yeah, here's your map here. I should probably mention that quite a few of these maps kind of look like they're taking place at night. Like, it's just the, the way the game's lit. Also, I don't bring Jagan into this chapter. Jagan's more or less met his expiration date. Like, he just, he reaches it really quick. So, here's Julian, with his cool little sideways pose. You know, something I miss about the newer, well, the older Fire Emblems, is that the portraits were pretty varied in, like, how they were angled, and, like, the facial expressions on them. There was a lot of personality in them, and you could sort of, like, get an idea of what each character was like just by looking at their portrait. Like, Julian... You could, you could just assume that he's kind of like a, I don't know, like, he's suave, good with the ladies. That's just what I get. Okay, so yeah, this chapter took a while. I mean, nothing's really going on in it, but that's the problem. Nothing's really going on in it, and it's a long chapter. So I proceeded to speed it up a bit. So, enjoy the chipmunk version of the game soundtrack. <laughs> So, basically what I did is I put two different teams going down different paths. The team on the right is going to basically recruit Naver and then kick the shit out of the rest of the enemies for some extra EXP. And the left team, Mars is just going to visit the house, kill the boss, and the other dudes are more or less going to clean up the enemies along the way. Now, you got to check out this village because... This is some pretty weird dialogue here. <laughs> yes, I'm an old man. Thanks for saving our village. Here's an axe. That draws blood from you and might kill you. That you shouldn't use. <laughs> what the fuck, game? And in Fire Emblem 1, the dialogue's even crazier. The guy says something along the lines of like, This axe will steal your soul and eat it. It's like super fucked up. <laughs> so it's like, why even bother using something like that? Anyway, since there's not much else to talk about with this chapter, you could just, I mean, you could watch the footage and see exactly how I do everything. Uh, let's get down to some subjects that I wrote down, because we're almost done with this footage. Holy shit. Okay, so. You might have noticed that there are different map sprites between Kashim and Gordon. That's because they're actually different classes. They're both archers, but... I mean, well, archers in the sense that they use a bow exclusively, but they're actually different classes. Also, this is Naver. This guy is fucking gorgeous, I gotta say. Like, he has really nice hair and just a nice face. If, if I were gay, I'd totally bang this guy. Just, just putting that out there. Anyway, yeah. He decides to join our team because Sheeta's like, Alright, I'll put my arms out. You have to kill me if you gotta get- If you wanna kill the others. And he's just like, No, I don't wanna hurt women. Because even though you're totally capable of defending yourself, I- I- I have old-fashioned values. But anyway. Yeah, Kashim is the hunter class, and he promotes into a bow knight, which is like a mounted horse. You know, basically think nomadic trooper and such. Um, and Gordon is kind of the, the classic archer class that promotes the sniper. So it's not too different from what it is today. Um, I don't remember, but I think in FE1, one of those two classes cannot promote. But don't quote me on that, because I, I don't remember much. I'm getting old. Anyway, so in the comments of the previous video, somebody mentioned that I didn't really talk about the the fighter dudes that you get in this game. 
Uh, this is the game that started, well, this in FE1 started the archetype of, like, the fighters, the fighter brothers who, like, fight together. One's got more HP and, I guess, strength, and the other one focuses more on skill. You know, they just focus on different stats. I don't know exactly what ones they differentiate in, but there you go. Not much else to say about them. Next. So, this chapter, similar to chapter 5 of FE6. Oh, here's a little fun fact. Fun fact. Even though you're weighed down by the weapons in this game, they don't affect the actual void you have. So if you have like 20 speed and 20 luck, and like, like normally that gives you 40 avoid in this game. Uh, but even if the weapon you're wielding is like really heavy, you'll still have 40 avoid. So you can kind of exploit that. Um, also, it's worth noting that while, while axes are kind of terrible weapons, I am training up Bart's because he has really good growths and he's actually a pretty good unit despite the weapon weighing him down a buttload. He, j he has a really good strength stat. He actually gets a lot of speed. Decent amount of defense. So he is worth training up despite his di his disadvantages. Um, so let's see, what else do we got here? Um, those of you who saw who took note of the weird dialogue at the beginning of the chapter where it's like asking me to do something and it has like NB and a bunch of other jumbled text. That's the game asking if you'd like to skip the cutscenes, because this is not my first try on this chapter. Apple died in the previous attempt because I got too cocky. Uh, but yeah, this game allows you to skip cutscenes, and that's actually really convenient, because some of the games I don't think let you. So, if you guys haven't noticed already, the game also doesn't have a weapon triangle. And... I mean... You know, what else can I say? Like, there's no weapon triangle. There you go. Um, so, another thing you might notice about this footage is that I'm not always moving my units. Sometimes I just end the turn and just don't move certain dudes. Like, for example, the Axe Brothers I don't move, the Archer dudes I don't move, and the Healer I don't move. The Healer being Rena. And that's because... Because the game is so slow to play and the maps are so huge and there's only a small number of units that are like really good the, the game kind of puts you in that kind of habit where you're where you're just you just have a small group of dudes for kind of your backup units in case something goes horribly wrong and if nothing goes horribly wrong they just sit around and yeah it, that's just kind of a habit the game teaches you not exactly a good habit, mind you, but oh well. I guess the game should ha have less shitty units if it wants me to do something with them. <laughs> um, so, for the last few minutes of this, I'm going to talk about how some classes in this game do not promote. Now, we already know that the General and the Knight were once considered a separate class in FE1, but in this game... The fighters can't promote, thieves can't promote, lords can't promote, and a couple other classes can't promote. Um, in later games, they, these classes can promote, which is nice, but I actually do think that there is some kind of merit to making it so that certain classes can't promote. Like, it, do, it changes the gameplay up a bit, and I feel like some classes don't necessarily need a, need a promotion. Like, thieves... Assassin does not really improve them much, and, like, they're not a combat unit much anyway. They're not going to get a lot of level ups. You're not going to use them for combat much, so it's like, what's the point? I mean, obviously, it helps them increase their stats so that they can remain viable for longer, but I also kind of feel like you could just make their growth rates better or, or even their base stats, though. The latter, I kind of don't recommend, but... I feel like you could discourage the player from like training certain classes too much if you if you don't give it a promotable. I don't remember like all my reasoning I had, but it was a really sound argument when I first mentioned it to myself and figured it out. So this last bit, uh, we're we're about to see Marth. Do a fantastic four stock on this boss.
but first let's take a look at the shop. Or, or, well, we looked at the shop. So yeah, I'm using the support system right here to kind of allow Marth to get extra crit bonus. See, so look at that 26 crit. Marth is a friggin' sword master. And look at that, how he runs up to that guy. He, he's got no fear. He's just straight up YOLO. Um, so yeah. I don't think every unit needs to necessarily promote. I think that actually adds a unique kind of challenge to the game. And it also discourages the player from training up units that they shouldn't really train up. You know, saves up their time. I think that's the argument I had for it at the time, when I thought it was a good idea. But yeah, like, I'm sure nobody agrees with me on this, but... Oh well. I'm just tossing my thoughts around, I guess.